Welcome. I am Lynn from L&J Goods in Medina, New York. We are IOD retailers and we've been coming on here a long time sharing our projects and inspiration for the IOD TV channel. And um, I could not be more excited about what I'm going to show you today. So that said, let's get down to business. Even Megan and my hubby were very excited about seeing what happened here with these IOD molds. And I literally created the look of an antique Southern French cash pot um, planter box that was done using seashell seashells that were gathered and you know we've seen a lot of those old sailor valentines and sailors um oh, antique and vintage sailor pieces that were done with seashells you know they would create little jewelry boxes and trinket boxes but when i started um doing just some searches for um, old world textures and old world antiques, which I love, I'm crazy about. And I, I started searching some high-end antique shops um, that are online, some of the, the really big ones, and searching Pinterest. And when I saw some of these, and I was freaking out. So, um, I was like, I have to recreate this. I have to do this. So what I did is um, I actually chose a box. I was here literally looking through from like the third floor down to the basement for a box that I could put this on <laughs> because JR was occupied. I couldn't have him build one. So I just found this, um, this cedar box that's been sitting around for years and years. But I'm also gonna show you some of this technique just on um, a clay pot. But you could use this on a ceramic planter. You could use it on, um, you know, small wooden boxes, jewelry boxes, whatever you want. So how did I create that crusty, crusty texture? Do we have some people watching, Megan? Oh, yeah. I hope there's some people here from the south of France. That's what I hope. <laughs> Raise your hand if you do. Um, I used um, a few different colors of chalk style paint with this. So I'm using a oh, kind of a medium gray and you can use whatever brands you have. I would encourage you to practice, do a little piece, a little board and practice. Always, always practice and, and see how your paints and your mediums respond. I have a little bit of, this is kind of a sandy color, it's kind of hard to see, let me grab that off of there. Okay, a little bit of a sandy color, and then I have like a dark uh, brown black, almost, um, or you could use a black, you, you know, whatever's close. The, we don't have to do like perfect with these. So I'm using those three paints. I have some glaze medium here that I'm going to mix up with um, some of my paint later. And I have a texture medium. There are many different brands. You guys know what you are using. I am also using air dry clay. I am using um, a couple of different molds. This is the seashells mold. And I used a couple of little pieces from the mermaid mold. See that? Mm -hmm. And um, I also used one tiny little bit from this guy right here. The, this the is canthus. a canthus scroll. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, if you don't have these, that's fine. You know, you can just make what you can make here. I also did some freeform shells. So um, what I wanted to do is I, I really literally, when I try to recreate these finishes, I want to try to think back and I want to try to think of like, what is the predominant like quality of them? And as I looked at these pictures and I literally like 
was zooming in on them. And I also have a lot of antique concrete and cast iron pieces of our own. So I really looked at those. And, and what I noticed is that thick kind of weathered texture that was under there. So I wanted to first create that. And you can see here, I didn't do um, the sides and I kind of started on the back, but here it is. All right, and so what I did is I actually took that medium gray paint and I just mixed in some of my texture medium. And you so I really want this to be super thick and chunky. So I'm not mixing this completely. We always try to say it's, it's kind of like mixing up a brownie batter. We want the lumps. And because I already have my piece coated, I had to kind of do this in stages so that um, I could proceed with the whole process and you could see the whole thing. But I literally took an old credit card and I just scraped it onto the surface. Very random. Are Very. You going to show us on the pot? I'm gonna show you on the pot. So this is left over from another IOD Live that I did. So I am literally just going to, it's like using, um, I, I just, it's like cement. And I'm sure that that's what they use is some kind of a cement. So I want this really thick, and the reason I want it thick is because as this dries, it will begin to crackle and shrink a little bit and create that kind of texture. Now, okay, so here is what I did. These are, I made all of these in advance, but you guys know how to, you know how to do the mold. So I'll just do one quick one for a demo. These are, this is the IOD mold seashell. Yep. So we have um, cornstarch. I always use a little bit of cornstarch to, um, to dust the inside of my mold. Then I just take a piece of that wonderful air dry clay, kind of soften it in my hand just a little bit, and I'm going to press it in. I use my thumbs so much. If I was working on a very, very, like I wanted a perfectly flat back and I didn't want that real crusty, old, rustic look, I would actually now take a credit card or a putty knife and I would use the micro rim to flatten that out so it has a nice flat back. Okay? I am not doing that. I'm not worried about it. I am literally just going to... Well, I guess we're not exactly putting it on a flat surface here. No, we? we're not. We're not. So um, let's... Here, we'll do this little guy. Show you once again how I use my thumbs just to pull that air dry clay out of there. And I use the micro rim just as a guide. Honestly, I am not fussy with these because I just feel like, you know, I'm going to be gluing them on and if they crack a little bit or if they're misshapen or, or one end sticks up, that, that's okay with me. That's all right on this particular project. Okay, so there we go. I better put that one, I'm going to put that one aside. Because... Do you think it's better to glue them on when they're soft? You know, you case? you can do either. So mine had like dried. Yeah, I think you could. You could glue them on while they're soft so and they're then let them dry. Yeah. And then let them dry. And that's fine too. Okay. You got a few different ways that you can use these and it just all depends on what your time frame is and um, and how you like to work with your mold. So you could glue them on and let them dry. But what I'm going to do is I want to actually, eight, of course I don't have a tape rule, so I'm going to say that's about my center right there. My, I'm just marking my center with my thumbnail here, or you could use a piece of chalk or, all right, so I'm going to recreate this pattern over here. So I do want... I want to put one of my scallops right there. 
time. Okay, you hold up. Oh, okay. This is our favorite glue to use. You may have another kind of glue that you like, but this is um, an all-purpose uh, multi-surface glue tight bond, quick and thick, and I just will start to apply these all over. Now, because of our time, I'm probably not gonna be able to finish this. We're just gonna give it the idea. But, and I also didn't completely finish my other side, so I'll be able to show you the technique on the other side as well. But we'll see, we'll see how fast it goes. These are all kind of like right. Again, there's no, there's no perfect way to do this. Seems to me one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I have one right here. One, two, three. And see here, like if I press this down to make it flat, see how it cracks a little bit? It's kind of cool. It's really cool. Not worried about it. To me, the more texture, the better. Oh, I left room in between for my little shells. So let's move those before it actually starts to. But see how you can just kind of get creative and do your own thing. To my, I would say, you know what, take a snap a picture yeah, and then <laughs> you would be able to kind of refer back yes. to the picture instead of flipping this all over the yes. place. Yes, <laughs> constantly. <laughs> okay. So, so you can glue these on while they're wet. They will shrink a little bit, which is why I like to have the my surface painted You might find you're using a little bit more glue than usual just because you've got a, a rough um, and uneven texture. What will you use this box for, someone asked. Well, it's going right to my cat cottage, and I'm just going to I'm gonna fill it with more seashells. Faux, um, faux greenery, probably. I wouldn't plant directly into this particular box, but you could put live could plants in there right if, you, if you lined it, yep. Alrighty. Now, I, when I was looking at all of these, um, all of the uh, images, there were these little, there are these little shells. I know there's a name from them. I can remember collecting them when I was a kid, but they're just those little oblong shells. And I don't know what they're called. If anybody knows, share, please. So what I did is I just took some air dry clay and I just made some, okay? That's all. These are gonna get painted anyway, so um, it doesn't matter if they're perfect, if they're pointy on one end. In fact, I, I, I think like the, the more um, misshapen and, and natural they look, the better. Mm -hmm. But I did want to show you how I created additional pattern with my air dry clay. So just pop that on there, pop that on, and pop that on there. Okay. Isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. I love this. Love it. Okay. And then I would continue. Just making these little tiny molds, or not molds, but these little tiny shell kind of oblong ovals. And pressing them right into place. Now, if you want to, you can come by with a, with a damp um, Q-tip. Q-tip. Thank you, Megan. 
to clean up any extra glue if you want. I Again, I'm, I'm not I'm not fussy about it. I'm really not. To me, it it's the more that. texture, the better. So these little guys I painted a touch with Dark gray. some brown gray black or brown black. And I will use a hair dryer just to. It can, I, it's, I'm not looking for these to be perfect. You're gonna see that it'll, they'll kind of rub off. But I think what I'll do is, um, I'll dry this and then show you guys like how then I add the other texture all the way. All right, so I've painted these. Um, let me get the hair dryer, sorry. Okay, so my next step, I was thinking like I want even more texture. I want even more of that salty, crusty, aged look. And so I took some of this, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a dark taupe-ish beigey, um, sandy kind of color. And I'm mixing some texture medium. <laughs> and then this is my glaze. Oh, just a clear glaze, This right? is a clear glaze. And I know you guys want to ask, like, what about proportions? I don't know. I, I do everything by eye. With a glaze, you're kind of wanting to tint the... Um, the glaze with your paint so it depends on what paint you're using just um, play around that's yeah. why it's good to play around on a little board yep so i and look at i mean i'm not even mixing this completely but i still have a lot of that texture medium right on there almost dry see that but there's my glaze too because i i want a very random look to this and then what i'll do is I'm just going to and this works to seal it as well right yeah it's gonna give you a little bit of a, a sealer over it which will help to manipulate our um, our waxes later and remember this has a clear medium and it's, it's a glaze medium in it so it's gonna it's gonna dry a little more transparent Typically when I work with a glaze, I'm gonna keep a damp cloth handy because I wanna wipe back any excess. You're gonna need quite a bit of, probably quite a, quite a few paper towels and water because you wanna, because I've laid it on so thickly, so I just keep dampening, but see how I, as I remove more of that, it's going to show the color of that air dry clay underneath, and that's what I want. But I wanted to still continue to get some of that texture in there. And when I flip this over to show you the other side where we're going to wax, I will, you'll see what I'm talking about. And, and even using a chalk style paint, um, you'll find that as you as you wipe this away, it might reactivate a little bit of that paint that's on there, but see how it pulls it away? Yeah. And it gives it yes. just a really aged look. When you work with a glaze, you have a longer open time, so it's not gonna dry as quickly. Good to know. So you have some time to play with your, your paints. Okay, and I'll come and I'm going to do, I'll finish laying on my other shelves and then I'll come back to that later. But now we're going to come back to here. So one side I have completely finished with all of my different waxes over here and this side I haven't. So I'm hoping that Megan can kind of get up close here. You can see where that glaze medium and the fresco and the paint texture, see that crustiness down in there? Mm -hmm. That is what I really hoped would happen, and it did. 
Okay, so next step, I have the glaze over this whole thing. So it almost creates a little bit of a sealer over it. If you want to, you can also add an additional top coat to it if it helps you to manipulate your wax a little bit easier. But I've got um, a few different waxes. I have a dark wax. So we're gonna go to this end and really deepen that up. Okay. Now that's a lot of dark wax on there. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to take some clear wax which I have right here and I'll just take a soft cloth, paper towel, whatever you like to use. An old t-shirt would be good. Old t-shirt, oh yeah. And clear wax is going to work kind of like an eraser. And again, you'll just want to continue to work with that until you have removed. Really what you're creating is a patina. Oh, absolutely, yes. That's exactly what we're doing. But I like to use then the clear wax to remove, and you can see then how the dark wax stays in the lower spots but those ridges on the seashells the high spots are going to um, show the detail oh but I have even I have another awesome trick for this too wait till you see so I am revealing what about a buffing brush? yeah you could use a buffing brush or a buffing case, or yeah or a buffing um, or just a like an, an old wax brush too something that yeah. can really get you down in there but I'm more concerned about revealing what's on top and what I found this morning was is I I wanted it to be even brighter and show even more contrast and it just happens that this morning, Megan and I were fussing with some furniture in the shop, and I was like, can you get me a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser? Oh. And I was like, hmm, I wonder how that would work. Wow. And guess what? My Mr. Clean Magic Eraser? It really is magic. Look at Look at that and how <gasps> that just reveals. Wow, what even, a good trick, Mom. I know, isn't that great? This is white wax. And I have my white wax, a white wax brush. So here again, you can, you can even add a little more just kind of depends and the white wax also gives it that oh you know the you know when salt water like ocean water dries it, it has that salty um, haze and so I just thought this kind of created a little bit of that look as well that little bit of a haze You're not even gonna buff that, or you are? I, I would let it um, sit probably till tomorrow, and then I'll come back and buff it. Cool. Add a little more detail, like a little more wax if I wanted to, but that's it. Incredible. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? Well, I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely day. Thank you so much for joining. Remember, if you need a stockist, go to ironorchiddesigns.com or you can find um, a local retailer or an online stockist to get everything you need. Thank you, you guys. We'll come back and answer all the questions that you may have um, as they pop up. Have, have a, a wonderful day. day. Bye.